During his lifetime, he was best known for the homages to the square, but he only began them um, when he was 62 years old in 1950. When you look at this drawing, you see many of the qualities you see in the work for which he's been renowned his whole life. His ability to use minimal means for extraordinary effect. His ability to take one line, execute it meticulously, and echo his own profile so that you feel that you're in the presence of a human head. And what is he doing? He's evoking a subject. That's what he did with color. That was his lifelong belief, to honor the subject, color, line, animals, a human face, not to speak about himself. We have here some of his very early works, um, very pure expressions of color. Please remember that he never painted a color on top of a color. If you feel that you're looking at a form over a form and an effect of translucency or transparency, that is an illusion. What you're really looking at here is always paint on a white background, paint on a white background. He taught students to find the middle color so that you could create that illusion. And one reads this in many ways. At one moment, there's a form floating in front. At another, there's a sort of stage set going this way and that way. Multiple things happen. And multiple readings are like the idea of midnight and noon at the same time. Something impossible can occur in art. The imagination takes over. We're no longer in the realm of pure science. All of these paintings adhere to a very simple mathematical formula in which you have a central square weighted toward the bottom of the painting in an arrangement where whatever units you read underneath the central square are doubled to the left and right of it and tripled above it. That arrangement creates movement in and out, back and forth, sideways, up and down. It creates a tension, a lack of resolution. The squares enabled him to let color have its voice. He called them his platters to serve color because he could present any number of color climates, any number of juxtapositions, sometimes painting two paintings where the only difference between them is that one has at the center a Grumbacher Riley's Gray number eight, and the other has a Windsor and Newton Riley's Gray number eight. It makes them different paintings, emotionally, physically, and plastically. We're closing by looking at a group of his red paintings. Commercially, red is very popular at the moment. For the past two or three years, the red paintings have been fetching twice the amount of money as paintings in other colors. One asks why. Part of it is that red has a particular impact on people. Part of it is that Annie Albers really prevented Joseph from selling red paintings during his lifetime because she considered red the color of love, the color of passion. She thought of the red paintings as valentines to her. Indeed, they were to a large degree. When you look at this group of red paintings, you will see squares come and go before your eyes. You'll see colors evaporate into other colors. Joseph told me with great pride that the photographer Cartier-Bresson said to him, you paint circular squares. By this he meant the corners disappear. Look at these paintings, corners disappear, light appears, and you enjoy the miracle of seeing.